We define a beneficial mutation as a mutation that provides a benefit to the organism. In other words, I'm now resistant to the antibiotic, which is beneficial if that antibiotic's around. You know, okay? uh, as a human, I like to drink milk. Okay? I have a mutation in me that allows me to drink milk. It's a mutation. Oh, is that right? To, to me, okay. it's beneficial, you know, but it's still a mutation. So if you look just at beneficial mutations, which is what evolutionists love to look at, beneficial, 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 and I say, but that's really irrelevant. What's happening at the genetic level? That's the key. It's not whether it's beneficial or not beneficial, it's what's happening genetically. And what we see, for example, with antibiotic resistance. Antibiotic resistance comes by one of two ways, for the most part. You have a vector come into the organism, which is bringing in some kind of gene that makes it resistant. Okay, well that vector already exists. You're not introducing anything new into biology, it's already there. So that doesn't account for the origin of anything, it just counts for how it moves around, okay? The key thing then becomes mutations. That's why, that's why evolution is mutation and natural selection. Because if you do change the sequence, that has the potential to give you a whole new genetic component, a whole new genetic mm -hmm. activity. Mm -hmm. But when we look at mutations that cause antibiotic resistance in bacteria, what they are is mutations that eliminate transport proteins, eliminate enzyme activities, eliminate functionality of certain proteins, eliminate, eliminate, reduce, cut down, eliminate. See, is there a trend here? No, okay. Yes. With lactose utilization in a human, the reason I can drink milk is because the normal regulatory system that shuts down the gene that makes the enzyme so you can digest lactose, when you, reach when you move through puberty, that gene gets shut down. If you have the mutation, that blocks the shutting down. But what have you done? What you've done is you've eliminated a pre-existing system. Mm -hmm. There are people that are actually resistant to HIV. Do you know how they're resistant to HIV? They are missing the key protein the HIV virus binds to. And if the virus can't bind, it can't infect. Now, if you're exposed to HIV, that'd be pretty beneficial mutation, right? Sure. But what's it caused by? It's caused by loss of a pre-existing protein. And so what we see, and I can go on and on, what we see is repeatedly what the evolutionist community does is they offer example after example after example of what they claim, here's how evolution works. No, it's not. Because what you're doing is you're taking pre-existing systems and knocking them out mm -hmm. or reducing them. You're not explaining how they evolved to begin with. It's the analogy of if you have a house and in your house you have the dining room and a wall and then your recreation room. And your wife being you know, the big socialite that she is, she wants a bigger dining room to entertain her parties. Well, you have a choice. I can keep my rec room or I can knock at that wall and get a bigger dining room. Well, you know, everybody knows happy wife is a happy home. So you knock out the inner wall and they have a bigger dining room. And it's beneficial because she's happy. But don't tell a carpenter that how you built the house was by knocking out a wall. But that's what evolutionists do repeatedly is they give you an illustration of knocking out a wall and this is how the house was built. Mm -hmm.